Good evening, everybody, and, um, and thank you for this um, kind introduction. And um, I'm, I'm always happy to meet my friends uh, around the globe, especially from Kerala and other states of India. Uh, I will start my presentation with, uh, with slides. And uh, so I hope that you are seeing my slides. Yes, yes, sir. Please, please continue. Maybe you can uh, use full screen yes. or if it is possible. The topic of my speech will be how shall we design an Ayurveda clinical study? And I will focus uh, in this lecture on uh, clinical studies only, uh, despite that uh, there are also other kind of studies which should be immediately mentioned, uh, like uh, database analysis and uh, and case studies and, 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 and other sources, which are extremely important, especially in the field of Ayurveda. And I, I would like to start with, um, with uh, the greetings from the University of Latvia. And you see uh, from our picture of main building uh, that uh, this is an old and traditional university and uh, also, the rector, Professor Indrich Smujnik, is sending you the best greetings. And but we we have a, a really uh, looking forward in in the future. And as uh, Professor Bushan already uh, said in his introduction, Ayurveda is not just a, a history. Uh, Ayurveda is the future of the medicine, and that is my deep belief uh, and uh, I, I'm trying to implement this in the, in the real uh, research work. Uh, I'm working also at the hospital and I see every day a lot of uh, patients uh, with diabetes and other um, endocrine diseases, but also uh, other people, uh, old people uh, getting COVID-19, etc., etc., et and, and I see that um, we can help not just uh, with uh, modern approaches, so-called uh, biomedical approaches, but also with uh, systemic approaches, with an integrative health, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to integrate Ayurveda as much as possible in, in my clinical practice. I'm also teaching uh, young uh, colleagues and uh, some are not so young, but they are very enthusiastic and, and keen, keen to acquire a new knowledge and, and much broader uh, view on, uh, on medicine. As you see uh, from this picture from uh, Mangarai in Tamil Nadu uh, five years back. And uh, we initiated a study which is uh, supported by the Ayush Ministry and uh, CCRS which means uh, Central Council for uh, uh, Research in Ayurveda, uh, Ayurvedic Sciences, uh, on type 2 diabetes. And uh, we will uh, respect in our study um, you know, all traditions of uh, Ayurvedic uh, the stratification of, of uh, people and uh, changing the medicine according to the uh, response of uh, of a patient to the treatment. So the crucial questions still remain. Uh, uh, do or not the clinical studies in Ayurveda? And, and that question is re repeatedly asked by, by Vaidyas and, uh, and, and also teachers of Ayurveda around the globe. Should we do uh, clinical studies at all? And uh, what should be uh, the hypothesis behind the study? And what outcomes should we measure and uh, expect uh, of, of those studies? 
And, and finally, what is the optimal design of the study? And here I, I tried to uh, show my own view on, uh, on uh, clinical studies in, uh, in uh, biomedicine, which is uh, depicted on the left panel and in, in Ayurveda. And uh, if we compare then uh, the development of uh, Western medicines is taking uh, approximately 15 years. And it starts with uh, preclinical pre testing, uh, different uh, laboratory and animal models could be used. And, and then uh, we have phase one, phase two, phase three uh, trials. And then, uh, then it comes to the approval by the regulatory agencies and uh, finally also when when people are using those uh, biomedical drugs and, and medicines pharmacovigilance uh, 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 system should uh, pharmacovigilance system should be there and then and, uh, and side effects and efficacy is is reported uh, regularly I compare it, and it, it's my interpretation, in fact, uh, that um, the finding and, and approvement of, uh, of Western uh, biomedic medicines, which in fact are uh, uh, single molecules, uh, either small molecules, uh, which are similar to minerals, or large uh, molecules, which are similar to peptides or, or um, or molecules of organic uh, origin <clears throat> are similar, in fact, to the Rasa Shastra methods. And in Rasa Shastra, as you know, uh, we always should expect some uh, side effects and and, uh, and 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 really prove it on on um, on, on patients before we we try uh, and introduce a new combinations of, of uh, drugs using minerals and metals. And the same uh, story is in uh, in uh, in um, clinical studies involving uh, Western medicines. In contrast to that, uh, if we speak about Ayurvedic medicines, uh, which could be divided in many subcategories, but I will focus on herbs and animal products, products like uh, ghee or honey, etc. Actually, the experience uh, which we uh, have is not uh, just 15 years old, uh, but uh, many hundreds, if not thousand years old. Uh, but the, if we uh, think how many uh, different herbs and animal products were, were test, tested in, in the past, even in, in such a uh, long term, it's Again, I think it's tremendous number. Uh, I estimate that probably one million different uh, herbs and and uh, and products were tested uh, or, or screened uh, by by uh, ancient Vaidyas, and more than ten thousand were selected uh, for current uh, clinical use and, and fixed in Indian. Uh, uh, Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia. And the testing of uh, different approaches in medicine, um, in fact, was similar in the Western and uh, world uh, and uh, what we call the Western world and in India. And uh, it was uh, the knowledge um, which was discovered by, by uh, by certain uh, very talented uh, uh, Vaidyas like Hippocrates, Hippocrates and, and then uh, developed by, by uh, scientists like Aristotle in, in Greece and, and Francis Bacon in, uh, in, in England. And it, and it ended up with uh, textbook knowledge, which is uh, taught in uh, the universities. Uh, but you look, uh, look, look in, in the 
in the history of India, again, we see the same uh, pattern. Uh, here you, you see um, all ancient sages, uh, Sushrta, for example, here, and then uh, this method of uh, teaching and, and, and trying and, and, and failing in many cases, and, and it, it resulted in, in, in uh, classical Samhitas. So the, the process of uh, knowledge acquirement, um, knowledge um, mining was similar around the world. But the, the medicines are different. And, and uh, here I, I uh, tried to find pictures which are showing the difference between uh, pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. So pharmaceuticals uh, are mainly used in Western medicine, but uh, as I said, also in Rasa Shastra. And nutri uh, or nutraceuticals are, are used in, uh, mainly in Ayurveda, but also in, in uh, the folk medicine and in, uh, in herbal medicine in, in every, every population, in fact. The, the main uh, difference between uh, single molecules and, and the complex uh, systems of molecules are that uh, that uh, uh, the interaction between the body and, and human cells uh, with uh, nutraceuticals is very, extremely complex and uh, we cannot describe even, even now it by, by simple formulas and it's still based on, uh, on, uh, on uh, trial and, and, and failing uh, method. So, because uh, Ayurvedic drugs are not acting as molecular nutrients. And um, this is a, a, a quotation from the book of uh, Dr. Singh, Body, Mind, Spirit, or Integrative Medicine in Ayurveda, Yoga, and Natural Cure. In my uh, uh, opinion, uh, the interaction between uh, um, Ayurvedic drugs or medicines and the human body could be described as interaction between two regulatory systems. And uh, for that, we need uh, not just uh, uh, methods of uh, modern biomedicine, but also the methods of the, what I want to call uh, future medicine which involves uh, basically system science and, um, and appro different approaches of artificial intelligence and machine learning or deep learning so that we can uh, describe interactions which are much more complex than uh, capacity of our brain to conceive it and understand it. But uh, hopefully, Artificial intelligence uh, will help us in, in that. And the uh, first um, signs of it are already published. Uh, for example, the uh, coral, uh, paper on the col correlation between um, uh, main uh, three uh, Ayurvedic uh, phenotypes, uh, Vata, Pitta, and Kapha, uh, and uh, the, the genome. Uh, polymorphisms. I will skip it. So, uh, my first uh, conclusion from this part uh, of the lecture is that Ayurveda exhibits complexities that cannot be handled by current research designs and uh, used in biomedical research. So the good news is that we have a lot of uh, randomized clinical trials now, uh, trying to show the, the evidence-based Ayurvedic uh, medicine. 
And uh, this is quite an old but uh, still uh, valid uh, Cochrane review from uh, 2005. And uh, what you see here is that um, that analysis uh, shows that uh, complementary and um, alternative medicine drugs uh, in almost uh, or or more more than one third of cases are is is uh, showing a positive possible positive effect uh, but you should not concentrate on on uh, just uh, 37.2 percent if you look at the the same uh, reviews for uh, modern biomedicine uh, actually the numbers are not much bigger it's 44.4 that means uh, that even uh, even modern med biomedicine is not so much uh, ahead of uh, of Ayurvedic medicine in terms of uh, evidence based. Sorry for for this background, but uh, we we are having in in our hospital every, each hour such an announcement. So I'm I'm showing you um, the scheme which I like very much and which I'm uh, which inspired me uh, uh, by preparation of my own uh, clinical studies in Ayurveda and uh, it's from um, Dr. Witt, which is a colleague of uh, Dr. Kessler in, uh, in, in Berlin, in, in Charité. And uh, I, th I think the main uh, thing here is that um, we should involve in designing of uh, clinical studies uh, Ayurveda diagnosis, not just the Western diagnosis. And the treatment should be based on uh, Ayurvedic uh, diagnosis in Ayurvedic trials, not on Western uh, diagnosis. Uh, I, I call it by myself it as a code and the code model. So first you should uh, select and submit to the uh, funding agencies, for example, the design which is based on uh, modern medicine, but then uh, during the the selection and randomization of patients, you should uh, uh, do this coding process. So to transform the diagnosis from the Western terms to the Ayurvedic terms, treat according to Ayurvedic rules. And then uh, at the end, the, the results, the outcomes should again be decoded in, in order to make them acceptable and um, understandable for the the, the academic society uh, around the globe. So the code and uh, the code principle is extremely important. So if we uh, focus on the aim of the treatment, so in, um, in biomedical approach, it, it always is based on the influence on, uh, on pathogenic mechanisms of disease, which are in most of cases, very strictly uh, defined. But in, in Ayurveda, it's much more broader and it's, um, it's the principle which is quite difficult to understand for my colleagues here in, in, the, in Europe and in, uh, the university. So to, to distort the balance of uh, internal uh, uh, environment or datu samya, It's not just uh, elimination of the cause of disease, but also purification to restore body channels and uh, palliation of imbalance by proper diet, drugs and lifestyle interventions. So it should be properly translated into the, in the, into the knowledge which is, uh, is used by uh, Western academicians, if we want to uh, get acceptance around them and, and really 
make it as a part of the future medicine. So this, the study uh, protocol should contain, of course, the scientific rational and the hypothesis should be really based on uh, Ayurvedic uh, knowledge, deep Ayurvedic knowledge, not on, um, on Western interpretation of it. Of course, we should always uh, think to what uh, population should we do the study and uh, listen, uh, list the study endpoints. And, and uh, uh, very important is to do the appropriate statistic analysis. And in, in Ayurveda, it's not necessarily the same uh, way of uh, applying of uh, statistic analysis as in the Western biomedicine. So now I, I'm, I, I'm coming to my conclusions, I hope in uh, right on time. Yes, we should do clinical studies in Ayurveda. That is my firm uh, uh, belief and, and uh, I, I will do it uh, uh, as long as, as it will be possible. But uh, the study design should be tailored to the main principles of Ayurvedic treatment. Uh, clinical outcomes should be measurable, but strictly formulated according to the principles of Ayurvedic healing. And uh, my own impression is that crossover design with uh, multiple placebo, as uh, will be, I, I hope, uh, explained by Dr. First, uh, is appropriate to uh, Ayurvedic clinical studies, especially if we are involving not a large databases, but uh, a number of um, yeah, patients. Uh, yes, we need to do clinical trials in Ayurveda. And, uh, and the time is the greatest innovator because environment and diseases are constantly changing, as well as our understanding, uh, what is the disease and uh, how to treat them. And uh, therefore, uh, the implementation of Ayurveda is uh, probably one of the best solutions for the current uh, enigmas and, and problems in, in uh, biomedicine. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.